April 11, 2024, News Report 1. Since February this year, Canadian media have been continuously reporting on Chinese interference in Canadian elections. The opposition Conservative Party accuses the Canadian government of turning a blind eye to this. The Trudeau government finally initiated a public investigation process in September last year. The first phase of the investigation was to hold public hearings. Trudeau stated at the hearing that both elections were held at a time when China-Canada relations were very tense. In December 2018, Canada arrested Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou at the request of the United States, and two Canadians were subsequently arrested by China. China would not want the Trudeau government to win in Trudeau's party elections. In addition, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, SIZE, testified at the hearing on April 8 that in February 2023, the agency submitted a briefing to the Prime Minister's office stating that China had covertly interfered in Canada's 2019 and 2021 elections through fraud. In response, Trudeau stated that he relies on face-to-face -face briefings to obtain information and that sometimes oral reports from the intelligence system and written reports are not consistent. Regarding the question of whether China helped Liberal Party Chinese-Canadian MP Han Dongpeng in his campaign, Trudeau said he had asked the Chinese state and intelligence departments, but both said there was no credible information to prove that Han Dongpeng had been interfered with by the CCP, and therefore no measures could be taken to dismiss the candidate. News Report 2 According to Reuters, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced on April 10 that it would list for Chinese companies on its entity list for purchasing artificial intelligence chips for the Chinese military. The four companies are Beijing Lingzhong Cluster Technology, Xi'an Lico Innovation, Beijing Anhui Trust Technology, and Tianjin Saiten Helu. Companies listed on the entity list must obtain a license from the U.S. Department of Commerce to import goods or technology from the United States. In addition, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced on April 11 that it would impose sanctions on the U.S. companies General Atomic Aeronautical Systems and General Electric Land Systems for selling weapons to Taiwan. China has frozen the assets of the two companies in China and prohibited them from issuing visas to executives. This sanction will have a serious impact on the operation of these two companies in China. News Report 3 The US dollar rose on April 11, reaching 105.36 as of 9 a.m. Eastern Time, a five-month high. With the rise of the US dollar index, major Asian currencies began to fall. The yen fell to 152.8490, its lowest level since 2019, making the yen relatively cheap and travel to Japan more affordable. Japanese Finance Minister Hayashi expressed concern about recent exchange rate volatility and said the Ministry of Finance might take measures to address it. When the yen exchange rate fell to 152 in 2022, the Japanese government intervened, using 9.2 trillion yen to support the exchange rate. On the other hand, the renminbi closed at 7.2369, a five-month low, just slightly off the dark price of 7.2568. The midpoint price of the renminbi against the dollar on April 11 was 7.0968. Other Asian currencies depreciated, with the Korean won falling by 0.67%, the Singapore dollar by 0.62%, and the new Taiwan dollar by 0.59%. The rise of the US dollar index to a five-month high is mainly due to the CPI index reaching 3.5, higher than market expectations, which has postponed the market's expectations for the Fed's rate cut, thereby pushing up the US dollar index. News Report 4. The Ukrainian parliament overwhelmingly passed a mobilization bill on April 11. The bill, known as the conscription bill, will take effect one month after it is signed by the president of Ukraine, Zelensky. According to the law, men aged between 18 and 60 must go to the conscription office within 60 days to update their documents. Ukraine will use basic military training to replace military service. University students will receive military training while studying. 
Level 2 and Level 3 disabled persons identified as of February 24, 2022, will undergo re-examination to determine their suitability for service. Those who evade military service will have their driving rights restricted. Ukrainian Army Commander Pavliuk posted on Facebook that no matter how many weapons and equipment Ukraine obtains, the army still lacks soldiers. Weapons and equipment do not operate or shoot automatically, and drones do not fly automatically. At the same time, the Ukrainian parliament also passed a military personnel salary bill by an overwhelming majority. According to the bill, frontline soldiers will receive a monthly salary of 70,000 hryvnias, equivalent to 1,782 US dollars. The basic salary is 25,000 hryvnias, or about 637 US dollars, the combat post salary is 100,000 hryvnias, or about 2,548 US dollars. According to this standard, the monthly salary of frontline soldiers involved in combat is 4,330 US dollars. Various political forces in Ukraine have been debating these two bills for a long time. Now that these debates have finally settled, Ukraine is preparing to conscript 500,000 people. The army's numbers are already sufficient, and the situation will become easier to handle in the future. The key is to reach a political consensus domestically. News Report 5 According to Bloomberg, the United States and its allies have warned Israel that Iran may launch a large-scale missile or drone attack on Israel this week. Following this warning, the Iranian embassy in Syria was bombed by Israel on April 1, resulting in the deaths of seven Iranian military advisors, including two generals. Iran's supreme leader Khamenei stated on April 10 that Israel must be punished. His military advisor Safavi stated that Israel's embassies worldwide are no longer safe. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu responded that Israel would take action against anyone who harms or plans to harm Israel. U.S. President Biden stated on April 10 that the United States' commitment to Israel's security and countering the Iranian threat is unwavering, and the United States will do everything to protect Israel's security. News Report 6 According to reports from Taiwan's United Daily News and the China Times, Taiwan's incoming premier, Cho Yung Tai, will announce his cabinet on April 12. The cabinet lineup, which has already been partially revealed, includes Minister of Foreign Affairs, Lin Chielung, the current Secretary General of the Presidential Office. Chairman of the Mainland Affairs Council, Chiu Tsunzheng, Vice Secretary General and Vice Chairman of the Straits Exchange Foundation. Minister of Justice, Cheng Mingqian, Prosecutor General of the Taipei District Prosecutor's Office. Minister of Education, Qing Yingyao, President of Sun Yat-sen University. Previously confirmed key officials in Cho's cabinet include Deputy Premier Cheng Li Chun, National Security Council Secretary General Wu Xiaoxia, and Minister of National Defense Ku Li Sung. Cho's new cabinet is mainly composed of local Taiwanese. In addition, President-elect Lai ching Yi and Richard Bush, chairman of the American Think Tank 2049 Project, met in Taiwan on April 11. Bush, who served as Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Security Affairs during the Trump administration, stated that Lai ching Yi is about to lead a vibrant democratic country and will face many challenges. He looks forward to hearing Lai ching Yi's thoughts on the new government and how the United States can assist Taiwan. Bush also noted during his meeting with President Tsai Ing-wen that April 11 marks the 45th anniversary of the Taiwan Relations Act, which is an important platform and mechanism for Taiwan-U.S. trade, security, and military cooperation. News Report 7 KMT Vice Chairman Xia Li Yen continues his visit to the United States. He met with David R. Stilwell, chairman of the American Institute in Taiwan, to discuss Taiwan's political situation, cross-strait relations, and the relationship between the KMT and the United States. This is the second meeting between the two within 10 days of Stilwell's visit to Taiwan. 
The KMT stated that during the meeting, CIA reiterated the KMT's commitment to its pro-American and pro-Japanese stance, fully supporting the U.S. in its reform direction in international affairs, and striving to strengthen exchanges between Taiwan and the U.S. CIA stated that as long as conditions permit, he will fully assist KMT legislators in visiting the United States. The KMT's policy is to maintain relations with both the United States and the CCP, but which is more important? Sia stated that the CCP is, of course, more important. Sia led a visiting delegation to the United States on April 7, during which they met with American think tanks and congressional executive departments. News Report 8 In an article on April 11, Nikkei Asia's chief editor, Zhong Zakar, stated that Xi Jinping's latest actions indicate that the Chinese real estate crisis has spread to the core circle. He pointed out that the investigation of Minister of Justice Tang Yijuan is not a simple anti-corruption case, but involves deeper issues. The investigation of Tang Yijuan not only reflects the Chinese real estate crisis, as he is associated with Evergrande Group, but also may indicate that the real estate crisis is affecting Evergrande's bankruptcy and influencing Xi Jinping's political faction. Zhong Zakar wrote in his article that Tang Yijuan is considered a member of the Zhejiang New Army. The Zhejiang New Army refers to a group of cadres that emerged during Xi Jinping's leadership in Zhejiang, including cadres from Zhejiang and Fujian provinces. When Xi Jinping was in charge of Zhejiang, Tang Yijuan served as the Secretary General of the Zhejiang Provincial Commission for Discipline Inspection. However, he was investigated less than two years after being appointed Minister of Justice. Zhong Zakar pointed out that after Xi Jinping came to power, he promoted many cadres from Zhejiang, such as the current Tianjin Municipal Party Secretary Li Chang and the Prosecutor General Chen Miner. He stated that the golden age of the Zhejiang New Army is over, and Xi Jinping may be aware of this problem, beginning to reduce the number of members of the Zhejiang New Army. The report also stated that according to sources within the CCP, Xi Jinping has cleared most of his political opponents through anti-corruption efforts, but subsequent factional struggles are inevitable. This indicates that Xi Jinping has shifted from fighting opponents to internal struggles, so members of the Zhejiang New Army cannot be complacent, and they cannot even make the smallest mistakes. News Report 9 According to documents recently submitted by the Hong Kong Civil Service Bureau to the Legislative Council, as of November last year, there were 19,700 vacancies in the Hong Kong Civil Service, close to 20,000 vacancies. Currently, the total number of civil servants in Hong Kong is 172,000, a decrease of 2,000 compared to the previous year. The three departments with the most vacancies are the police, the Correctional Services Department, and the Education Bureau. The shortage of personnel in the police department may be due to the poor reputation of the police, the complicated situation in the Correctional Services Department, and the shortage in the Education Bureau may be due to the large number of teachers emigrating. Young people may be unwilling to work for the government because of serious livelihood issues, and the Hong Kong government needs to strengthen efforts to address these issues. The Civil Service Bureau stated that it will fill vacant positions through recruitment and promotion, and even consider extending the service time of civil servants to address the problem. The enactment of the Hong Kong version of the National Security Law and Article 23 of the Basic Law has led to the collapse of one country, two systems, and the large number of vacancies in the civil service reflects that no one is willing to work in such positions. News Report 10 According to Reuters, on April 11, the Ho Chi Minh City Court in Vietnam sentenced Vietnamese tycoon and real estate developer, chairman of Van Ton Dat Group, Zhang Mylan, to death for embezzling $12 billion, marking the largest financial fraud case in Vietnam's history. The prosecution stated that in 2018, Saigon Commercial Bank experienced a run on deposits, and the Vietnamese government intervened to assist the bank. Zhang Mylan allegedly set up fraudulent loan applications through her company, Van Ton Dat Group, and withdrew $12 billion from Saigon Commercial Bank. Zhang was arrested at the end of 2022, and the trial began on March 5 this year at the Ho Chi Minh City Court. 
In addition to Zhang Mylan, there are 85 other defendants, including former employees of the Vietnamese Central Bank, government officials, and Hong Kong real estate developer Zhu Ligue. Zhang Mylan's relatives stated that she will appeal. In recent years, the Vietnamese government has begun to crack down on corruption, with more than 4,400 people prosecuted for alleged corruption offenses as of 2021.